With LIFO inventory costing rules, there's a lot of details that must be tracked. And it can be rather expensive for an accounting department to handle the LIFO method. So there is a simplification rule. It's called dollar value LIFO. It's just looking at it differently. And this may not seem simple at first. It's just a different way to look at LIFO. So inventory method comparisons in a rising market, FIFO, this will give you the lowest cost of goods sold, the highest gross profit, and higher taxes for the current year. LIFO will have a higher cost of goods sold in a rising market, lower profit, lower taxes. And average costing always falls between. Specific ID, this is going to depend on which units are sold, of course. So inventory costing methods, FIFO follows the natural flow of inventory and actually better follows the, the way the IFRS rules are written. LIFO records sales in reverse order incurred and it is forbidden by IFRS. With FIFO, it's the last purchased items still sit in your inventory. So think about the last purchased items. That's our current economic cost. What's something cost today? That's what's in the inventory. Your older costs are in cost of goods sold. With the life, which is the opposite, the oldest costs remained in inventory because that new stuff you're buying today, current, is being sold right away or recorded as sold. With FIFO, because of that, the ending inventory better matches current replacement costs on your balance sheet. With LIFO, the closest to following, this is really thought to be closest to following the matching principle, what is on the income statement is cost of goods sold. Better matches today's cost. With FIFO, inventory is thought to have a better valuation of what it's worth today at today's cost. LIFO is not really realistic of the true value of inventory. While cost of goods sold best follows the matching principle, what remains in ending inventory is not valued always correctly. LIFO has many disadvantages. There are LIFO layers. Layers of inventory may have been purchased years earlier. Inventory is not valued at its current dollar value. It's more valued in units of original cost. LIFO liquidation can, can occur can produce much higher net income resulting in higher taxes, higher than you would had, you had hoped for when you chose to use LIFO. With bookkeeping, unit LIFO requires more tracking. So, so we're going to talk about here is the difference between unit LIFO that you're taught when you first were introduced to LIFO accounting as opposed to dollar value instead of unit LIFO as opposed to dollar value. There are higher accounting department costs incurred. Physical flow, very few inventories actually flow in a natural LIFO manner, and, and that's really how the IFRS rules are, for, are written. So current dollar value, what is the inventory really worth today in dollars as opposed to units? It's not a time value of money issue. issue. You're not discounting anything. It is the economic value. And it has more to do with the effects of inflation on inventory. We don't talk about inflation that much in accounting. That's more an economic study. But with dollar value LIFO, that's really what you're looking at. Different layers have different inflationary effects. And your goal, of course, is the accurate valuation of your assets. So for dollar value LIFO, the goal is what is the inventory really worth today? It's thought to simplify record keeping. Once you learn how to do it, it's not that bad, but it's, it's a little tricky at first. You're going to focus on the value in dollars instead of how many units I have. How many units I have doesn't matter. I'm looking at a dollar value. So the goal, again, is the accurate valuation. There is no distinction drawn between the old and the new units. You're going to focus on the inventory value, not the number of units. A de this decreases the negative effects of LIFO liquidation, and the goal, again, is accurate valuation of the assets. What is the dollar value of my inventory as opposed to how many units do I have? So what is a LIFO layer? So beginning inventory, let's say, is 25.5. Ending inventory is 30,000. That means a new layer at new costs were added this year of 4,500. That's just a simple explanation. So for your calculations, the way the problems may be written in your textbook, 
The problem may give you cost in based year and cost in current year. So you, if that's so, then you have to calculate the cost index. That's part of the calculation. Or your problem may just give you the cost index, and then you have to kind of back into, you have to calculate what was my base year cost, because you're going to need this information. What is the cost index? Cost in the layer year divided by the cost in the base year. So either of the two must be given the way the various problems are written. Just know that you could be given different information doing two different problems. So we're going to look at an example. Base year inventory is 50000 on January 1, 2015. Ending inventory, year-end cost, 55650 So we have a cost index of 1.05. Next year, ending year inventory costs are shown. This is a cost index in 2016 of 1.1. So you can think of this as an inflationary effect for the four years. So what does this mean? Keep in mind, just because layers are added at year-end cost does not mean layers were added at base year cost. So when you're thinking layers, you're thinking how many units did I add? But you're focusing on dollar, and because of inflation, it doesn't necessarily mean more units were added, just a dollar value was added. The base year and the current year cost are not comparable because of inflation. So dollar value LIFO converts your layers to a base year cost for comparability. That's all it's doing. So step one, calculate base year cost from current cost. Two, determine layers at base year cost. Three, convert base year layers to dollar value cost. Step one, I take the Ending year 55,650 divided by the cost index. Notice you were given the cost index. So you're converting the end year dollar value to be comparable with the January 1 dollar value. You're stripping away the effects of inflation and you can do a comparison. So, because you want to look at the ending value at base year cost for comparability. Take the ending year, divide it by the cost index. Do this for all the years. And again, you will be given enough information to calculate this. You'll either be given the cost index or you'll be given enough information so you can calculate what the cost index is. Okay. If we look at the cost index. You, if you're not given the cost index, you're given the base year cost. So that's And that's really all you need. You have to have either the base year cost or the cost index to solve this. Okay, so the first layer is 50000 The second year, after converting it to base year cost, that's a layer of 3000 Second year, base year cost, comparing it to that fifty. You're stripping away the effects of inflation by doing this. And the new layer was actually 1,200. Notice the base year cost went down in 2018. Inflationary effects, we can have deflation some years. So when that happens, instead of doing a reduction this year, you reduce the 2017 to what it would be. I'll go back. I'm going to go back a couple slides so you can see this again. 53,000 represented a $3,000 layer. 54,2 represents a $1,200 layer. But now in 2018, it is 53.5, so instead of doing a subtraction layer, you never want to subtract a layer. You simply adjust last year's layer. That means what happened? Life of liquidation occurred. There's no new layer added in that year. Finally, 57.6 represents a 4,100. 
because your layers have to total 57 sets. It's a little hard at first. But just remember what you're looking at. You're converting to everything to base year cost and then comparing this year's to the prior base year to determine what those layers are. Step three, convert the layer at base year cost to its dollar value cost. So you have dollar value cost. You convert it to base year cost, and then after you determine your layers, you convert it back to the dollar value. Take the 3,000 layer, and this is done because you really can't distinguish in an entire amount what came, what layers were added and when, and different inflationary effects of the different years. So you're removing the effects of inflation, calculating your layers, then adding back in the effects of inflation to determine your dollar value. This is called dollar value LIFO. So to review, number one, calculate base year costs from your current costs. So first you take away the effects of, of inflation to determine what your actual layers are at base year, so you are comparing apples to apples. Then you convert the base year cost back to dollar value using that cost indices. And that is dollar value LIFO.